All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are out, we're gonna do some nymphing. I did a little poll on the YouTube community tab and asked if more people wanted to see streamer fishing, nymph fishing, or more of me like talking about how I set up my rig and how I use it. But it seemed about more than half of the people I believe uh, wanted more nymphing videos. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, we got a nice color to the water here. It's, uh, it's pretty clear, but it looks like maybe it has a little bit of tint and it's not too high. It's a little lower than what I'd like it to be, but it's a nice uh, flow and we're gonna just see what we can get out of some of these slower rifts. Uh, I'll probably fish the rifts anyway, just cause there's some sun out, maybe some fish move up in there uh, to kind of feed and bask in the sun a little bit, but I'm gonna start out here throwing on a stone fly and maybe an egg pattern and we'll sort of go from there. But if you guys wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all my videos. Hit the like button if you wanna see more videos like this uh, of nymphing, and then go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this video, and let's get into it here. All right, so we are about to make our first cast here. I got a stone fly on with an egg pattern. I'm just gonna start working my way across, and then I'm actually gonna go down a little bit because I, I didn't know that I was up this far. Usually I start down there. I'm gonna work my way across and then work down uh, from the other side a little bit and then we'll work back up. Cause that's a nice little run down there that I've caught some fish out of before. Right now I'm just fishing in behind. There's a boulder there. So we got a little eddy behind it. Just seeing if any fish are holding in there. Not sure how long I'll stick with the egg or not. I, I just have a feeling it's not an egg day, but it's always a good bet to start with one in the winter. We're gonna have to do a little bit of searching as well to kind of find out what water type they're sitting in. All right, so I'm now switched the egg out. Uh, I still got the stonefly on the point and then I have the simple betis on the tag. The egg wasn't producing anything. So I still have confidence in the stonefly but we're gonna try out the simple beta, see what that does. There is our first fish. Not a bad size one either. Uh, looks like he's on the stone fly. Actually, you know what? He might be on the betas. He's getting all tangled up now. Gotta get him up here. Not a bad size fish, probably about 14, 13. Get him back in the water. Um, he got tangled up, so I couldn't really actually tell what fly he took, but it, originally when he was on, it looked like he took the uh, stone fly. I came down right over there, so I don't know. I probably spooked whatever was sitting right there, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Tell you what, for it being winter, these fish are pretty active. Fighting pretty good. He's all tangled up now too. All right, so we got another nice sized fish. He was on the stonefly. And there he goes. So far, it seems like they could be up in the riffles and the stonefly seems to be the fly of choice. Um, if I don't get anything else on that betis for sure, because I'm not sure if that first fish was on it or not, I'll probably put on a different fly. I might, be, I might actually go back to the, uh, oh, there's a fish right there. Um, I might actually go to the blowtorch, the green blowtorch, but I actually think well, no, this fish is on the stone fly also. So a lot of people were asking what good winter flies are and 
that is one of them, a stonefly. You can't go wrong with a stonefly. All right, another nice fish. Tell you what, they're slamming it because uh, both fish that were for sure on that stonefly, it was down pretty deep in their mouth. That fish got me in a little tangle, so I had to pause to get that out. But like I was saying, if the betas doesn't do anything here soon, we'll probably put on a green blowtorch and keep the stonefly on just to kind of give them another option. But so far, it seems like the stonefly might be the winner. And there is another fish. This looks like a decent size fish. Probably like 15, 14. And uh, looks like he actually might be on the betas this time. I don't want to speak too soon because, ah, no, he's on the stonefly. All right, so he's not as big as I thought, but he is on the stonefly and it is a nice fish. Another nice little brownie. I really like the spots on him. Nice, beautiful fish, let him go. So yeah, this just goes to show a lot of people in, uh, when it's winter, they'll stick to like more of the slower runs. But uh, when you have a little bit of sun like this, I like to check out the, the faster riffles because uh, they are, I mean, they become lethargic, but they still got to eat. And if the food just isn't in the slow pools for them, they're going to come back up into these uh, when it gets a little bit warmer to feed. So when you're fishing water like this, I know a lot of times people say like follow the, the seams and stuff like that, but sometimes the water is just so sporadic that there's, there's truly not like a one seam that you can just target and fish. So when you're working water like this, where it's just a bunch of riffles, uh, I usually just work it all and don't really target any specific area because a lot of times the, the seams that they're sitting in are just underwater and you're not gonna be able to see it. So I used to be intimidated by this kind of water right here where you can't really see where an obvious spot, maybe a fish would be laying. Um, but I kind of overcome that just by, I mean, you just gotta fish it all and eventually you'll start catching fish out of stuff like this and then you'll have confidence to fish it. All right, so we're coming up here on another rift section. This section right here is pretty deep and I have a small hole in my waders. I'm not trying to get soaked, so unfortunately, I'd like to wait out a little further, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm just gonna carefully work this inner edge. Nice, beautiful little fish. Nice silver look to him. All right, so we are back. I got a stone, same stone fly on. Uh, switched out that soft hackle hairs here though, because I haven't gotten anything on that. We're gonna try that flash quill. I have the flash quill on that we tied a few weeks ago. Try something a little flashier. Most of the stuff I've been running already has just been natural looking. A lot of times in the winter, flashy, flashy stuff will uh, actually do pretty well. There is a fish. Looks like a pretty good one. It looks like he's actually on the flash. The flash quill. All right guys, another nice trout. This one's probably about 15, 14 inches. Nice long trout and I like the spotting on him as well. So yeah, he took the, the flash quill 
about right in here. So we're gonna continue to work up this water. And then we're gonna come up on a nice, uh, another nice piece of water as well. Another fish. Tell you what, they, they really do seem to be just sitting up on the top of these rifts. He took the stone fly. Oh, come up here. Another nice one. Probably about 14, 15 again. So today I'm staying on top of the GoPro because last video, uh, when the GoPro died, I caught fish and I didn't put on in the new battery immediately. So it was kind of not good footage. Wow, I'll tell you what, there is, that is three fish out of that same spot. Um, but yeah, I, I just staying on top of the GoPro so I can get more hookups on film for you guys. Get up here, buddy. Come here. Let's get you up here. <clears throat> He's on the stone fly. Yeah, I tell you what, those, all three of those fish are literally sitting in that same exact spot. This one's a little smaller. Probably about 12 inches. Well, let's see if we can get another one out of there. Should be about right here. And I actually believe I just had a hit. I don't even know what's there either. It looks like maybe just like a tiny drop off and there is another fish. Yeah, there's a drop off there or something. They are all sitting right at that drop off. Not even gonna net this one. This one's smaller, but this is on the stone fly again. Another 12 incher. So this is our first fish in a little while. Looks like he's on the stone fly. Not a bad little fish. All right, so this is some pretty good water up through here. Um, I don't know, they, they seem to be, they seem to have turned off in, up in the riffles, so I'm sort of trying to uh, focus on some of this more like, it's still like running, still moving water, but um, it's a lot slower and a little deeper. So hopefully we'll have a little bit more success in this water type change. I mean, I was fishing this before, but it just seems like that's where they are. There's another one, yeah. I think they're in this water eating now. The sun kind of went away. The sun's not out as much now. I'm trying to keep him out of that. I don't want him to spook the other fish. Come here. Oh. Uh, it actually looks like he took the flash quill. So I still got the flash quill on and that's what he took. It actually almost looks like the same fish. Nah, this one's a little bit bigger. Nice little fish. So we got one on the stone fly and one on the flash quill.
And there is another one. <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like, like I said earlier, like they just seem like they're stacked all in one area. And that's it. All three of these fish seem to be about the same size. Another like 12 incher. And I really wish I didn't have a hole in my waders because I'd be wading out a little bit further. So I'm just kind of fish a little farther than I normally would. All these fish seem to be about the same size in here. 12 inches. Come here, come here. This one looks a little bigger than the previous ones. I'd say probably about 14 inches. He's on the stonefly. So yeah, not a bad day already. Caught well over probably, I'd say about 15 fish. Just gotta kind of find where they are. They're not, they're definitely not spread out by any means. They seem to be stacked up in certain areas. So you can see already, as we've gotten out of that area, they seem to have turned off again. All right, so I actually believe this is a pretty big fish. Oh yeah, this is the biggest fish of today. He's doing some head shakes, probably about 16, 17, looks like. It looks like he's on the stonefly. Oh, yeah, this is a nice fish. Gotta get his head up. Oh, let's come in here. Oh, yeah, that might be. It's pushing. It's pushing 19 even. It's a good fish. All right guys, so we got a pretty nice fish here. I'd say this one's probably about 17, 18. I'm gonna put him more towards 18 though. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get a release on him. And there he goes. Another not bad sized fish, it took the flash quill this time. But yeah, another, I don't know, I'd say probably 14 inches. Not a bad fish. All right, and this one took the flash quill again. That seems to be possibly starting to be the hot fly. Nice little 14 incher again. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this one. Um, I actually got back to the car and I checked the time and it was actually a little bit later than I thought. And uh, by the time I get to anywhere else and you know put all my stuff back on, I could have kept my stuff on, but by the time I get everything back on and get to another spot, um, I won't have much time before it gets dark. So I'm gonna head out and uh, not a bad day. Uh, caught 
plenty of fish, um, all pretty decent size too, nothing super small or anything like that. And then we caught the one nice 18 incher. So like I said, not a bad day. Did some nymphing for you guys. I know you guys wanted to see uh, some more nymphing. Hot fly of the day was the stone fly, but the flash quill also caught some fish and the betas I think caught one or two. I can't actually remember, but a little weird too. Uh, a lot of the fish were sort of only eaten in specific areas. And then once you moved from that area, you had to find like a another area within like, you know, a half mile or whatever uh, that they were kind of congregated and eating. But I guess that kind of goes with how winter fishing goes to begin with, because a lot of the time winter fishing, the fish are kind of, you know, congregated in in certain areas it was just it was just a little weird because the fish were congregated in weird areas but um i expected if they were eating for them to be a lot more spread out but that didn't seem to be the case so yeah that's going to be it uh don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos and stay up to date uh, on my videos leave a like on the video if you liked this video and enjoyed it and then uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought and any suggestions for future videos. And until next time, peace.